mat cutting machine doesn't actually create perfect mats. Not without your knowledge and input. So it's not really a machine at all. It's really more of an instrument. But this morning we're going to focus on mat cutting, how to get good results. And the way we're going to attack this is <coughs> we're going to say, look, you're going to have problems. We're not going to try to dodge this issue. We know you're going to have problems. And we know the problem you're going to have. But here's the good news. There's only a handful of problems you're going to have. See, there's only a few things that are going to happen that are going to disappoint you in the course of your mat cutter. Now, the reason that you have a mat cutter, presumably, is to cut a window in a mat with an angled edge to it, a beveled edge. And that beveled edge should be 45 degrees, the full length of the window. But you'll notice from time to time you're getting a little dip in the corner, or maybe a long, subtle bow on the beveled edge if you look closely, or maybe a little wavering on the beveled edge, inconsistencies in the beveled edge and length. Now, in the course of things, we're going to uh, cut two mats. We're going to cut a single mat, which will then act as the over mat and a double mat combination. Let's go ahead and remove this piece to begin with. This is the bevel cutting head. Go ahead and take that off to the side. We'll come back to that in a moment. The body of the cutter itself is referred to as the cutting board. And this long, narrow piece of metal that runs the length of the cutting board is the guide rail. Now you'll notice that this guide rail is contoured so that you can get your thumb and index finger around the top edge. And if you lift up on it here, you'll see that it lifts up just enough for you to slide that board in and out underneath it. In other words, it's not on a hinge. So if you lift up on it now, you can pull this piece out. Go ahead and pull that out. This is a scrap piece of mat board. A remnant left over from the larger sheet when it was cut down to size. This is sometimes referred to as a backing sheet. Also sometimes called a slip sheet or an underlayment. I'll call it a backing sheet. And you always use a backing sheet whenever you cut a window in a mat. When you go to cut a mat, you always start in the middle of the plane of the mat board someplace and punch a hole through. Well, what's interesting to observe is that after uh, just a few cuts without a backing sheet, cutting in the airspace provided by the slot, you'll notice that you're getting a rough or ragged edge on the window. And it'll occur to you that the blade has gotten dull and you'll change the blade and you'll start in again. And you'll get maybe five, six cuts in before you start to notice that you're getting a rough or ragged edge again. And at that point, it'll occur to you that it's going to cost you a lot in blades. Uh, in fact, uh, it needn't cost you a lot in blades. All you have to do to get good, sharp edges on your window without having to change the blade constantly is to use a backing sheet. The backing sheet provides stability for the face paper of the mat as you go to punch through it. Leave the backing sheet out for now, and that'll give us an opportunity to better see this long, flat piece of metal with the two black knobs on it that lies over this scale parallel to the guide rail. This is the mat guide. And the mat guide is what you use to measure and mark out the borders of your mat. All right, now we'll turn our attention to this bevel cutting. The chrome part in the middle here is referred to as the chrome plunger. I call it the chrome plunger because it plunges up and down like this. It has a hollowed out area at the top of the chrome plunger, just big enough to put the thumb of your right hand. When you put the thumb of your right hand and press down, you'll be operating that the way it was designed. Pencil line closest to you as you stand here at the end of the cutter. So stand down here. Okay. And now, ah, now it makes sense going that way, right? Yep. Most of you have overcuts. There may be one or two of you who don't. Those of you who don't have overcuts, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you're thinking, look at all these poor people struggling. Here I am, the very first time I got perfect corners. This is the thing I was born to do. <laughs> All I have news for you, I hate to burst your bubble, but uh, if you have a perfect corner right now, you can go on to the next <coughs> mat, do everything exactly the same, and have overcuts. And those of you who have overcuts now could go on to the next mat, do everything exactly the same, and have perfect corners. How can this be? I mean, you're doing everything exactly the same each time, and you're getting a different result each time. It's a real head scratcher. And so you go out, you buy a more expensive mat cutter that's got automatic production stops, and you discover that what it is is it's a metal block that locks down on 16th inch scales. 
And then when you cut, the cutting head contacts is stopped. Now, tomorrow we'll be working with some production stops. So you set this all up. You go to cut your first mat. You're fully expecting, well, now I'm going to have perfect corners. And guess what you've got? Pulver cuts. Yeah, just because you have automatic production stops doesn't mean that you're not going to have overcuts. In fact, here's an eye opener. There's not a mat cutter made at any price that will guarantee you perfect corners without overcuts. Overcuts and undercuts are directly related to the thickness of the mat board. And you're cutting a wide variety of different thicknesses of mat board. But you want to unwind this all the way down to the house. As you're unwinding it, you're going to get these four brackets. Now, the border finder was devised years ago at a time when you could have a border that was too narrow or you could have a border that was too wide. Traditional framing from, you know, 25, 30 years ago had borders that, you know, at some point were too wide. That's no longer the case. Have you seen a situation where they have a picture this big and then they have it in mat and frame this big? Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. Now I ask you, who came up with this idea? Somebody <laughs> <laughs> wanted to make more money. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Right. So they sold this idea. They thought it's our lucky day. Because if I have to frame a picture this big in a traditional format, then the frame would only be this big. But if I can get you to go for this, I just made a whole bunch more money. Here, is just find out what, what this adds up to. So that's easy enough, right? I did. 13 by 10 and 13 by 10 and a half over here, what did you come up with? 13 by 9 and a half back here. Whatever you come up with, then that's it. So remember, all of this is happening before you bought your frame. You don't have a frame. You're just working out to a frame size. And now you know what it is. Now you work the frame. Okay? Now, stay with me here because there's two ways we can order a frame, right? If we're making our own frame from a stick of mold, we're going to look through the selection of molding styles. And we're going to say, okay, I want this style. And we look and it tells us the frame width is one inch, let's mm -hmm. say. Okay? How many miter faces are there? Eight. There's eight miter faces. There's four corners, but there's eight miter faces, right? So here's the way we approach this. We say the frame is one inch wide. We're going to have to account for eight miters. So 1 times 8 is 8. We're going to need 8 inches just for the miters, right? All right, then we go to this, to our equation. 10 and a quarter, and there's two of these, right? Mm -hmm. One on either side. So that's 20 and a half. And over here, 12 and a half, there's two of those, 25. So what's 25 plus 20? Why, it's 45 and a half, right? 45 and a half plus eight the miters, right? 53 and a half inches is what we need plus Beer. the allowance. Yeah. Another quarter inch for the allowance, 53 and three quarters is what we need to make this frame with an allowance, right? Out of one inch wide stuff. We know we need 53 and three quarters, so how long a stick of molding are we going to buy? Five quarter length. Now, the way we can do it is we can say we want a custom sectional frame. So we go to the custom sectional calculator <coughs> and we put into the calculator what? Quarter by 12 and a half? That's what you put in there. Ten and a quarter by 12 and a half. You might say, well, wait a minute, what about the, uh, what about the allowance? You don't have to worry about the allowance. Remember, the person who cuts the frame has to account for the allowance. See, here's where ignorance is bliss. Most people never heard of an allowance. They don't realize that framers are putting an allowance into every frame they make. 